The scripture we study is Luke 1, there at verse 18. Zechariah said to the angel, How shall I know this? For I am an old man, and my wife is advanced in years. And the angel answered him, I am Gabriel. I stand in the presence of God, and I was sent to speak to you and to bring you this good news. Watching Christmas movies is an experience that remains even during the pandemic. You may not be able to attend festive Christmas parties or to even plan an elaborate Christmas dinner. But you can watch your favorite Christmas movies. For some of you, that may be Elf. The adventures of Buddy as he makes his way in the world to find his biological father. For others of you, it may be a Christmas story, the quest of Ralphie to get a Red Rider BB gun as a present. And if you're like me, it may be Miracle on 34th Street, as Chris Kringle attempts to reveal himself to skeptical people. As different as those movies are, they have a commonality. Each of them is filled with characters who have competing agendas. Buddy wants to find his biological dad, and his dad wants nothing to do with him. Ralphie wants to get a Red Rider BB gun, and his mom doesn't want him to have it because she is certain he will shoot his eye out. And Chris Kringle wants to reveal himself to the walkers a mother and daughter that are skeptical about his identity. Competing agendas don't just permeate movies, but even our lives. All of us have desires, plans that may not fit with those that God has for us. This emphasis on agendas may not seem to fit with our series, ready or not. A discovery of those reasons that we may not be ready for the work of God in our lives. Because it's not the right way, because we're not the right people, or because it's not the right time. And that emphasis on time really has me thinking about agendas. Because each of us have have had that thought that it's not the right time to get sick. Because there's so much to do at work, you've just gotten a promotion, there are things that need to be accomplished before the end of the year, and you can't be quarantined for the next two weeks. You certainly can't go through all kinds of, of therapy. You have things to accomplish. To be honest, it's not the right time to reveal things about your life to share secrets that you have been hiding. You really want people to perceive you in a certain way and to think about you in a positive manner, and you don't want to let them know some of what it is that you have done. Or to forgive another. The hurt is too fresh. It's not the right time to declare that somebody is forgiven. You need to work through your emotions and they need to demonstrate that they're really sorry for what it is that they have done before they can be forgiven. That sense that it's not the right time is driven by an agenda. To get things done at work, to maintain a particular reputation, to deal with our hurts and emotions. And as we feel pressure on those agendas, as it seems to us that, that our time is not being honored, we have this sense that God doesn't care. He, he doesn't care that I'm, I'm dealing with all this stuff at work or that I might be embarrassed uh, about my past or uh, that it's hard to forgive other people. And the reality is, that God doesn't care. That may not have been the message you were expecting. God doesn't care about our agendas. 
but he cares deeply about us. And that's the reason he pursues his agenda. Zechariah had an entirely different agenda when it came to having a child. We would have expected Zechariah to be thrilled at the news that he and Elizabeth would have a baby. They had prayed for this for years. They had desired nothing more. And that an angel from God would appear and announce that that would be their experience should have been a delight to Zechariah. But it was anything but. He was skeptical. He was uncertain. He expressed that, that he really found this hard to believe, so much so that the angel made him mute until it would happen. And it's not that Zechariah didn't want a child, but that it wasn't the right time. His agenda was to have a child at a particular age, perhaps the same age at which all his friends were having children. And they would raise them together and have the experience and discuss it. And, and it would be a family like any other, an experience that would otherwise be unnoticed. But God had a different agenda, an agenda that their having a child would be entirely noticed because it did happen at an age in which they had no business having children and everybody knew it and Zechariah being made mute would draw attention to the vision that he had seen and the experience that they would have the fact that their child would be named John a name that was not common in their family caused people to take note and ask about his future and they continued to notice as he grew up, believing that God would do something special through him. Perhaps they were stunned to watch him make his way out to the wilderness and subsist on locusts and wild honey, to wear camel's hair, and then, in an extraordinary fashion, to call the people to repentance. Hundreds, thousands were baptized. Until a day came that he noticed one of his relatives. And everybody who had watched him and pointed to him was now directed to the Lamb of God who has come to take away the sins of the world. God's agenda was so much different than Zacharias. And it was so much different than the agendas that we so often expect. Many expected that the Messiah would be a warrior come out of Jerusalem, not a carpenter come out of Nazareth. Others declared that it was not the time for him to die or to depart. And they saw him hang there on a cross and suffer for our sins. The agenda of God is always different and better than ours. Your agenda may be to remain healthy and accomplish everything you need to do at work. But God's agenda is that you would take note of Jesus, that it's his work and success more than yours that makes all the difference. Your agenda may be to keep a part of your history secret because you don't want to be embarrassed. God's agenda is that people would see that you are loved by Jesus despite what it is that you have done. Your agenda may be to hesitate to forgive others until they demonstrate themselves worthy or you have figured out your emotions. But God's agenda is that they would recognize that forgiveness is not something that is earned by them, but by Jesus. That it is a gift that we receive and share with each other. That agenda is not always obvious. There are moments that it may seem hidden. And we've had discussion about hidden agendas in recent days. There's all kinds of thoughts about the mandates and the protocols that have been established because of this virus. There's a recent story about a restaurateur who has now been forced to close not only indoor but outdoor dining and is disillusioned by the agenda of the governor. 
She doesn't believe that it's just for reasons of health or that it's uh, to keep hospital numbers down. Because next to her restaurant, uh, there is a movie set that has been given permission to operate. And as part of that set, there is catering from people from all types of different households who gather to eat and interact every day. And she has the sense that maybe the governor has a different agenda. Uh, Perhaps he wants to favor some groups of people more than others. Or maybe he owes a political debt to those who have given to him in ways that she has not. And so people have these discussions. They question whether or not there are hidden agendas, not just from our leaders, but among our friends or our colleagues or even God. The reality is that God reveals his agenda to us. He wants us to have a sense of the way that he is at work. And there are a few things that we learn even from this passage. As part of this series, Ready or Not, in moments that we believe it might not be the right time, God reveals to us that his agenda is not without proof. He has shown throughout history evidence of the ways that he will work against our expectations, despite our plans to reveal himself. Consider Zechariah and Elizabeth. Read about Abraham and Sarah. God may be working through you in an unexpected way to cause people to notice him just as he did for them. God's agenda is not to withhold blessing. You may have that sense that God is keeping you from some great experience. Maybe it's a relationship that you're trying to have or it's money that you need and and God's withholding blessing from you and it doesn't make sense and you don't understand it. But God's agenda is never to withhold blessing from us. He goes to extraordinary lengths. He puts his own son on a cross that we might be blessed And in whatever way, at whatever time he would accomplish his agenda, it is with that assurance. And God's agenda is not realized at the same time for all people. God works at different times in different ways for people. And there may be experiences in which you find yourself comparing to others. You know, maybe God answered their prayer in such a way that he didn't answer yours. Or or they've experienced tremendous health while you've gone through continuous sickness. And you don't understand it. And it doesn't make sense. And yet, even though God may not work in the same time and ways in everybody's life, his agenda is the same. That we would notice him. That we would recognize the extraordinary ways that he loves us. The reality of our favorite Christmas movies is that the writer's agenda is always realized. It works out exactly the way the writer intended. For Buddy to develop a relationship with his dad and for them to have a family experience. For Ralphie to get the BB gun, nearly shoot his eye out, uh, but for everybody to be brought closer together. And for Kris Kringle uh, to be recognized as this beloved figure even as the walker's mother and daughter uh, come to recognize that there is something more than what they might assume. If Hollywood writers' agendas would be realized, you've got to believe uh, that a heavenly Savior's agenda will be that much more so. He authors the experience of our lives He works in us according to his agenda at times that we may not think is right. But that we will one day recognize is perfect. In his name and for his name's sake. Amen.